this house would remove Robert Mugabe. And now I call the first speaker for the government, Sam Natale. The story of post-colonial Africa is one that is not a story of a failure to act, but of an intentional policy not to act. It's not that we failed to act in Rwanda, it's that we decided to not act. And that's what this, this side is going to come tell you tonight, that we should again choose to not act. But on the side of the government, we say that this attitude stops now. Because we have an opportunity to correct the wrongs of the past. The sun has set on the administration of Robert Mugabe. We have seen that South Africa has changed their policy of supporting them. We have seen that the international community, specifically the United States, has said the two-party two system, not two-party system, two-party government will not work, has not worked, and the time has come to change. And we believe that at this juncture, it is time for that change. So what we're going to propose is we're going to remove Robert Mugabe. We're going to do this with an African Union force. It's going to be led by South Africa, because first of all, as an apology for their, pa for their past support of him, but moreover to reestablish their regional le legitimacy as a regional actor that should be listened to, yes ma'am. But when has uh, the African Union ever succeeded in a mission without making it worse? Well, we believe that first of all, they've been largely successful in reducing the amount of violence in the Congo because because they reduced the, the amount of violence. Now this hasn't been completely successful because they haven't had the number of troops, but the situation there is trying to stop a civil war rather than trying to take out a single individual. We believe that a relatively small African Union troop would be good at doing this. So they're going to t uh, take him out and extradite him to the ICC to stand trial at The Hague. The AU is going to stay in to minimize the ZANU PF resistance. We're going to give Chengarai's party control as prime minister. We're also going to abolish the office of the, uh, of the presidency and create, turn it over to a pure, purely uh, parliamentary system. The African Union is going to leave when the order, uh, when order has been restored, and the UN is going to aid this with a humanitarian mission to help correct the cholera outbreak and any sort of humanitarian problems that may arise in the aftermath. Sam. And the US and others are going to repeal their uh, sanctions on a uh, Mugabe or Zimbabwe. So this brings me to the points that I'm going to address. First of all, we have to do this because Zimbabwe is guilty of crimes against humanity. Two, we need, we need to do this to save the lives of hundreds of thousands of Zimbabweans. Three, we need to do this to establish a legitimacy for Changrai. And as my partner is going to tell you, we need to do this as a signal to other dictators. So on to my first point. Mugabe is guilty of crimes against humanity. He has systematically oppressed and committed violence against the members of his opposition. With Operation Shumumu, he's systematically deter uh, detained over 40 opposition leaders and has committed violence against their supporters. He came in under a violent military coup, and this has set the stage for the violence that he has continued to use. Moreover, he's become completely disconnected with reality, exclaiming that Zimbabwe is mine. We say that no, Mr. Mugabe, Zimbabwe is not yours. It belongs to the people of your country who you stole it from, yes, sir. If you would not quote him out of context, this quote continues into Zimbabwe belongs to the people of Zimbabwe, therefore no outside force but should be destroyed. He, whereas Changarai has been elected legitimately in two elections, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that the people of Zimbabwe have spoken up about what they think of Mr. Mugabe. So, on a principle, the international community has failed to step in and help Africa in its time of need. We must prosecute them on the behalf of his victims that he's been victimizing for years. This brings me to my second point, the ongoing death of hundreds of thousands of Zim uh, people in Zimbabwe. And this is because of a massive cholera outbreak. The international community has first of all been unable to step in because Mugabe has regarded any attempts by the UN or any other force to send in humanitarian aid as a, his, as a hostile action. And thus, the international community has not been able to go in and to correct the very simple matter of correcting cholera. This is a 20th century disease, ladies and gentlemen. Cholera does not happen in the 21st century. And the only reason it has is because he's denied, first of all, that the outbreak was happening until it had reached critical mass, but moreover, he has systematically denied the resources and infrastructure to create clean, healthy water to the areas of his country which have opposed him historically. And so, he has created this mess, and his presence is the thing. So if your plan is to try and 
If your plan is to try and just wait it out and wait for the man to die, this means also waiting for hundreds of thousands of people in Zimbabwe to die. And the sooner that we go in and remove him, the sooner that we can fix the cholera outbreak. Moreover, the danger that he's already putting in uh, his people in with the murder and terrorization of his people <coughs> in that country. The third thing that we must do is we must give Changarai support in order to rebuild in a post-Mugabe world. This is the high point in Changarai's support and public support. He's already transitioned power to key positions. He already has a coalition as the prime minister. And if he is not given the chance to succeed, he we risk having him be deposed by the military and have another ZNPF dictator. So we believe that whereas he's been supported, where he has about 70% support in the country in two popular elections, we believe that this is the best time to give him the legitimacy that he needs to succeed. Yes, ma'am. But considering Mugabe has approximately 30% support, how can you assure us you will not start a civil war? Well, see, this is first of all how a democracy works, is that you know, you have the majority opinion being able uh, being able to come in. And on the yes, democracy. even uh, even President Bush has 30% support in my country, but this doesn't mean that we should keep him around. And we don't believe that in an election, in, in, a, in, a, in a democracy, that you don't see the civil war coming out that you have to do. And I think it's distasteful that you think that just because they're Africans, they can't stand to have democracy Shame. because they can't have a, a, they can't have an election without 30% killing 70% or vice versa. We believe that they can work as a democracy. This is the point that I'm trying to make, is that a democracy is what we need, and a democracy is what they're close to having. And if we go in now and help Changarai succeed, then we can prove that democracy can work in Zimbabwe. Because Zimbabwe was strong. They were one of the strongest and most prosperous African states before Mugabe went in there. They had a prosperous economy. They had elections. And we believe that this can happen again. But this can only happen again if we go in. So rather than rely on the policy that we've had for years, which is what the opposition says, no, don't act in Africa. We tried that in Rwanda, we're trying that in the Congo, we tried that in Somalia, and we say that it's failed. So we say a different path is necessary now. Let us, let the, let the AU, led by South Africa, go in and fix the problem that we've all helped to create, which is the problem of Robert, Robert Mugabe. Let us end this problem now. I beg you to Thank you, gentlemen, for his remarks. And now I call on Simon Bellak, leader of the opposition, to address the House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, it's sort of ironic that we have an American team on the first proposition proposing exactly the same failed policy that the United States has engaged in the past and it's failed time and again. So I'm going to most talk about this, how basically what they're proposing is simply uncontainable and how their choice of actors is simply unfeasible. So let's get started. First of all, they're saying basically the African Union will do it. We say the African Union has this fantastic track record of failure. They have failed in Somalia, which is now basically not even a failed state, but a non-state. They have failed in Congo. Yes, they have failed. When you have 17,000 peacekeepers from the African Union with, who are collectively retreating, no, not just retreating, basically just running away from various militant forces in Congo, we say this is a failure. And we say that the same thing applies to Darfur, where again, they're completely outgunned by the Sudan. So we said, no, we really don't want African Union in there because they simply don't do anything. They just get themselves killed while achieving nothing. Second of all, the thing that should be left by African Union, which is a problematic considering how the opposition leader not, not four months ago tried to, to uh, remove the president of the uh, South Africa as being the lead mediator because according to him, the, the president of South Africa was, uh, wasn't hard enough on Mugabe, that he was too reconciliated in the end, did not hope for, hope for a hard enough line. So again, we say that this is, again, a bad chapter of actors. And last but not least, the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, already there was, the United States tried to pass a resolution on imposing sanctions on uh, Zimbabwe, and it was blocked. Why? Who blocked it? China and Russia. And we say that if they blocked sanctions, they'll probably block any more considered actions. So again, what we see is, no, thank you. What we see what happens is that, yes, maybe you will get some of the actors some of the way in there. This is the first step on the systematic failure that will happen there in life further in my speech. Now, also, on this point of China, we said they have this particular double standards because exactly the same thing as the polar outbreak in Zimbabwe happened in China, which again denied it, and yet nothing happened. So we say, what, what message are they sending if they go just against Zimbabwe? So, no, this is very 
badly in Zimbabwe. No, thank you. Now let's look at the situation in Zimbabwe, who actually has control. We see that basically the biggest problem in there is not just Mugabe himself, but basically the heads of security, basically the heads of police, military, prisons, so forth, who actually hold the most military power. And they aren't doing anything against them. These are the people who have already pledged that they will fight to the last to, to keep Mugabe in power. So let's remember what was the, basically the slogan of Mugabe in his, in, in, when he seized power in 1980. It was basically, vote for Mugabe or the war will go on. So we said that his supporters will continue exactly with this very same blueprint. And besides them, we also have all the veterans from the revolutionary war who are also perceived Mugabe as this father of Zimbabwe and already the ones who are up in the moment second who are performing the most atrocities against the opposition of Mugabe. Go. As you just said, father of Zimbabwe, the symbol they're fighting for, if you remove that symbol, the support of the military will falter. No, they just feel that everything Mugabe was standing for is is basically his fault. That this is going that the Zimbabwe is receiving again back to the colonial power, back to the white people. No, so basically what what happens is just you know, further justification to fight more. Right now, Mugabe still has to be posed as this voice of reason, and it's actually curbing back all this violence towards the people. But if you remove it, the violence will be get even worse. And even now, it was atrocious. Just look at what happened between the first election and the real and the second round of, for election for president. Basically, you had twenty thousand people tortured. Five thousand are still missing, and five hundred are dead. Yes, exactly. And what you're proposing is to let the people go through this again. The very the opposition leaders of Zimbabwe themselves decided to, um, to relinquish their claim on running for presidency because they fear that too many people will die. And what they will do now, you will basically plunge them into a situation they might even not want. It's quite clear that the opposition of Zimbabwe is trying to achieve this in a much more peaceful, much more gradual way, not just being a plunge into something they clearly don't have a handle on. Now let's all again we see that just by removing Zimbabwe, this is again another of those half measures which are really good. But it's a further problem. So look at this a bit more broader. Let's look Let's put the regional picture. What we say is that we have this huge problem in Africa. That when the borders were placed and how they were placed, they were not placed very smartly. So, which leads to a lot of ethnic conflicts. And we say that as soon as you take away Mugabe, he still does basically keep Zimbabwe under control. What will happen is you will have another, first of all, another civil war, which will also split to all the neighboring countries. This, we see this time and again. We see this with Somalia, where we have. Ethiopia and Kenya being involved. We see this in Congo, with basically everybody who borders Congo, or even not, is in there in some way trying to protect their interests. And so this is exactly the same thing that would happen here. And who is going to stand against this? The African Union, who is already running against all the same actors, will then be placed in harm's way again. And also ask their proposition, does the African Union even have any more soldiers? For instance, the, the another 10,000 soldiers are desperately needed in Somalia, and yet, from, and this is from 2007, and they still haven't been delivered. Why? Because none of the states in the African Union actually has a military force capable of doing that. They don't even have enough manpower to support those solutions. So no, we say that what will happen is you will plunge the whole Horn of the whole of Southern Africa into another chaos, into another Rwanda, into another Congo. Go. So if the opposite, if it's true that the uh, that the opposition party does, doesn't want this to happen, then why have they asked the international community for just this kind of action to help stop the cholera outbreak and help depose Mugabe? Thank you. Just confusing things. You're, now you're basically you are imposing this. Uh, they're asking for helping fight cholera to uh, helping fight Mugabe. No, we said they're quite happily in not in say that they're quite happy yeah. negotiating yeah. with Mugabe as it is and are looking to gain more control as. Basically, the notion, the whole proposition of sharing of power crystallizes. So, this is problematic. We also say that there is no guarantee actually that the new leaders will better. Just look at examples of Iraq or Afghanistan. What's happening there? Basically, the US forces and the Zimbabwe government, which was set up by US forces, is losing support. Why? Predominantly because they're actually turned out to be even worse than the people they have replaced. Basically, this is why uh, um, Taliban, backed by the Pakistani um, IS, ISI, they're in. Their intelligence agency is gaining food quality in Afghanistan again because the people of Afghanistan feel that the new government is failing its will worse. So we see that what will happen in general is their actors are unable to, to basically control the outbreak that will happen, and this outbreak will plunge the whole region into chaos. So we beg you to vote.
Thank you, gentlemen, for his remarks. And now I call on Lucas Caress to continue the case for the government. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Because this is such a pressing issue, and because we must act now, I'm going to skip the fancy introduction and get right into the substantial material of my speech. The first part of my speech will contain the refutation of the sir's points that were just mentioned, including some refutation of his reputation, and then I will go on to make my point, which is that the removal of Robert Mugabe from power will send a powerful message to other dictators in the world, specifically in Africa, that no longer will we stand and tolerate their actions and they must be held accountable. But first, moving on to respond to some of the points that the other gentlemen just brought up. Well, in first, in dealing with his critici criticisms of our model, he says that um, actually the AU is a terrible actor and they can't do anything, but uh, let me remind you, in the case that you brought up in Somalia, yes, the problems are terrible, but it is actually Ethiopian and African Union forces which are preventing the situation in Somalia from deteriorating even further. And then if you think you've seen horrible failed state actions happening in Somalia, just see what happens when you remove the only stabilizing actor, which is the African Union forces. Furthermore, he says that we can't possibly expect South Africa to lead any sort of force because Mbeke has actually opposed any international force. But actually, it is recently Mbeke himself who has changed his tune, having seen Zimbabwe and Mugabe's unwillingness to enter into a power-sharing agreement with Morgan Changarai. That having seen his unwillingness to compromise Having seen him say, quote, Zimbabwe is mine, he has changed his tune, and that is exactly the same kind of action that should lead us to change our tune as the international community. Furthermore, he says that civil war will erupt for a couple of reasons. He, he says that, one, the heads of the security who obey, who obey Mugabe will all of a sudden fill this power vacuum, and they will continue the oppressive forces. But let me remind you that these people, these security forces, only act out of fear of Robert Mugabe. They fear for their lives, and that's the reason that they have to continue these oppressive tactics. Nobody in Zimbabwe wants to see inflation of 200% a day. Nobody wants to see a cholera outbreak, but they are prevented out of fear for their lives by taking action. And we believe that once we remove this threat, once we remove Robert Mugabe, both as a powerful threat of lives and as a symbol of the government, that this will allow people to true and follow their true dreams, which is to have free and independent Zimbabwe. Furthermore, we disagree that civil war will erupt as a result of the removal of Robert Mugabe from power because, to be quite honest, there is already a coalition government in waiting that Morgan Changarai has established and has formed, and that the only way to actually bring this coalition government, democratically elected coalition government into power, is to remove Morgan Changarai and his nefarious, pernicious influence and power hold over that country. Yes, ma'am. But what's happening right now is Mugabe is blaming all for all of the Zimbabwe's problem of Western imperialism. Removing him from the power will only uh, uh, make this stronger. I, I don't know if you were listening, but I was pretty sure my partner said that we are not using a Western imperialist power. We are using an African Union force, which is actually also brought up by your own bench. I would advise you to listen to the points that we are making if you want to bring up a POI. So, moving on to my independent matter, which is the removal of Robert Mugabe from power will send a powerful message to dictators all over the world, but specifically in Africa, that they not only have a responsibility to their own citizens to care and protect for them, but they also have a responsibility to the international community to respect the, the human rights that we are all entitled to. Human rights like clean water. So, Robert Mugabe says, Africa cannot remove me. We say, Mr. Mugabe, yes it can, and yes it will. We say that no longer can dictators act in a vacuum of international oversight. No longer can they act without accountability. Because we say, here on Slide Government, that it is this very lack of international involvement, this very lack of oversight, this very lack of international backbone that allows for such atrocities to occur and to uh, continue to occur, which is the most boring part about it all. These atrocities are allowed to continue because we were afraid to take action. We were afraid of the consequences. We were afraid to put ourselves at risk. What we say, simply put, the harms and the dangers have become far too great for us to sit back and be afraid to, in to enter this conflict. Robert Mugabe has had the gall, he has had the gall to, contur to continue these abhorrent actions because he has seen the failure of the international community in the past to deal with dictators. Okay. He, saw Idi Amin, he saw Idi Amin live out his last days in luxury, in exile. He saw Omar Gaddafi held practically unaccountable for any of his actions. And he, he saw these actors 
not be held responsible? And he said, well, if they can do it, so can I. Well, we here on side government say, no, Mr. Gottlieb, you can't. Those days are over. We accept that we erred in the past, and no longer will we err on the side of caution. Stop. But instead, we will err on the side of justice. And we will say that no longer can we let people like Idi Amin, Omar Gaddafi, and Robert Mugabe continue on the path of robbing, raping, and exploiting their people, and expecting us to sit idly by. We say that Mr. Mugabe must be removed from power. And in saying that, we believe that it will be a powerful deterrent to other dictators from following in his footsteps. But you disagree. You're trying to send a strong message to other dictators of Africa, and yet you're counting on the same dictators, which are part of the African Union, to act in and relieve Zimbabwe. So they're basically signing their own death penalty. Well, we say that there is what there is a very bright line between just being an oppressive dictator and committing the kinds of atrocities that Robert Mugabe has committed. We say that there is a very big difference between just suppressing political rights and allowing cholera to outbreak because the people can't get clean water, because you have murdered hundreds of thousands of people in tribal exterminations in the northern part of your country. We say there's a large difference, but we also say that just because people um, th we say that this, because this might incur reflection and this might make people look at themselves, we say that's a good thing. We say if we can actually reveal some of the hypocrisy of some of these African dictators, that that's a good thing. And that is the exact type of message that we are trying to send. So thank you for making my point for me. So, as I was saying, here on Side Government, we say that sending this message that no longer will we stand idly by and let dictators rob their country and exploit their people. That in saying this, that we can deter other dictators from taking the same path for fear that they too will follow in Robert Mugabe's footsteps. That they too will be deposed if they take the same course of action that he has. And if we can deter one, two, three, however many strong men from committing the atrocities that Robert Mugabe has, while simultaneously freeing the Zimbabwean people from the terrible terrible oppression that he has bestowed upon them, and at the same time allowing the democratically government the democratically elected government of Morgan Changarai to take power. If we can do all of these things, not only can we, not only should we, but we must, ladies and gentlemen. And that is something that we all have a responsibility to do. We are all responsible in this mess. And that's why we all have a stake in cleaning it up. And that is why here on side government, for the reasons of freeing the people of Zimbabwe, allowing Morgan Changarai to form his coalition government, and for sending a strong message to other African dictators that no longer will we stand idly by while they oppress their people, we beg you to propose. I thank the gentleman for his remarks. And now I call Anna Moitza, England Kerr, to the front of the house to speak in favor of the opposition. Further along in my speech. Go. 
If not, when a viable democratic alternative has been proposed, and if not, when international sentiment has finally turned against Mugabe, then when? Okay, now I'm going to go by your own criteria. I'm going to go down the checklist of when we are apparently allowed to intervene in the um, processes of how other countries are run. Because this is what we're doing. We're saying that we, the international community, are oh so morally high and mighty that we can go down into Africa and tell them what's best for them. But before I come to that very, very condescending point on the front side of the government, I'm going to touch upon the message that they're allegedly sending to these dictators. Now, first of all, they portray them as very, very big, bad people that are doing a lot of harm, which is why we need to send them a message that they will get slapped on the wrist. But, so, what we're going to do to these people is go, we're going to turn around and say, you know, guys, dictators of Africa, please lend us your troops so we can go um, kick some Mugabe ass, to, to put it very, very crudely. And then we're going to turn around uh, and say, oh, look what you guys managed to do. That's going to happen to you with your own forces if you don't play by our rules. very, very badly. And if we uh, can see the twist that they can turn to, then there's a big difference between some dictators and others. Um, we have to kind of buy into the fact that there is no other dictator with the harm like Mugabe, so they have nobody to send this message to. So why, are the, why dear government, were you making the point in the first place? No, I'm sorry, you're, you're an advocacy. So let's stop our neo-colonialist tendencies and go down their very, very condescending checklist. So when do we stop deciding for third countries? When do we draw the line? Crimes against humanity. Well, I would come up and say that Guantanamo Bay was a very, very big crime against humanity. Are we going to? Yes. And we can add that the grave to that if you like, sir. Um, are we going to now go and, uh, and take uh, your president away from you? Now, yeah, OK, you elected him off, but uh, fine. But uh, to save lives, let's get rid of the Israeli administration. Uh, legitimacy, while well, imposing the Shah in Iran's really great job of us coming in and kind of giving a third world, a, 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 a third uh, power in the nation a big boost of US legitimacy. It doesn't work. And let's go to the cover up story the cover up stories of diseases. Well, China is famed for its cover up stories, and I would like to see the government point out a force that is going to come and change their regime. Or is this only applicable in Africa? And why is it only applicable in Africa? Have we really resorted to the backward neo-colonialist uh, mentality that we're allowed to do this because yeah. it's Africa? If not, sir, then why? You keep saying the word we, we. You seem to ignore the fact, as your benchmate did, that we talk about African forces being into self-corrected African problem, not we as the colonizers. But you've provided no viable African force to do this. We are not willing to send in people that are going to go there. And as uh, from the words of the people of Darfur that are having these wonderful African Union soldiers protect them, they are riddled with corruption. They are, they are supporting the people that are committing these crimes against humanity. Now, how, sir, are you trying to give any kind of legitimacy to any force that is willing to support these kind of human rights degradations? You have not proved your point. So let's go on with this uh, um, neo-colonial strategy and see how it manifests itself in the institutions that they have chosen to complete this story of, uh, of Zimbabwe. They're going to send them off to the Hague. Now, what better, wonderful way of judging our imperialism to drag these people right back to Europe because we conquered them? This is our final. This is our final stand. We win. We were better than you. This is our final stand to prove that we are better because we have the unlimited authority to judge you. The side of opposition stands back from this because we don't agree with this new colonialist log logic that is riddled throughout the government's case. They say that they're going to bring legitimacy to Morgan Tangara, but when has this ever worked? When has it ever worked when we send a third force in to prop somebody else up and try and sell them to the, to the country, to the people of that country? It didn't really work in Iraq, did it? It's not really working in Afghanistan, is it? It leads to bloodshed. Because at the slightest mistake, those people will turn around and accuse that once democratically elected person as a puppet. We say that Tsvangara possibly could be the road and the shining light at the end of the tunnel for, uh, for Africa, for Zimbabwe. But we say that is exactly re the reason why you should not delegitimize de de them. 
because Robert Mugabe is this evil. But unfortunately for Zimbabwe, at this moment in time, he's a very necessary evil. Thank you. I thank the lady for her remarks. <clears throat> and now we enter the second half of the debate. I invite Sergei Shustar to take the floor. Zimbabwe and redistributed it through a corrupt 
corrupt means to the members of their own regime. Secondly, the economic sanctions have caused the basically a successful country which was able to produce goods for their people, the food for their people, to falter, to have their GDP decreased by 50% in the last 15 years. These are the results of the government we're trying to remove here. No, thank you. Thirdly, um, the people, the diplomats of Zimbabwe uh, are at this point, this unlawful regime, to such extent not capable of representing their country that the G8 states have already said that, you know, that they're not the lawful representatives of Zimbabwe and can't represent the inter international community. And all the higher members of the regime of Zimbabwe have been banned from traveling outside of Zimbabwe to EU or the United States. Now all of this, thank you, all of this bad, Bad, bad consequences for the people of Zimbabwe will be removed. All these separate <laughs> actions that cause the, the daily lives of the people of Zimbabwe uh, to, to be miserable, no thank you, to be miserable in poverty and hunger will cause, will be removed and there will be no, it will be no longer necessary for all the oppression of Zimbabwe, in Zimbabwe to continue or would you disagree with that? Yeah, but from 1980, it was when, uh, Sorry, Mugabe started his reign until 2001. He was going on quite fine until we started around and kind of Shit. smacking him on the wrist in 2001. And with that, uh, caused the financial crisis. Which is, of course, totally disconnected with the facts as they were in the real world. <laughs> um, now, but to, to finish up, what have I shown you here today? Uh, I've shown you here that the evil, oppressive, corrupt regime of Mugabe has to bring me. That it's not just for the political high ground that the West is trying to make, it's for the people of Zimbabwe who have already clearly shown what they want. And by any sort of just democratic principle with regard to the uh, human rights, with regard to the basic health care, with regard to economic success, that dictator is causing direct harm to the people. And yes, as we have shown you here on the side of the government, we cannot save the world. We're not perfectly, perfectly successful in Somalia. No, we, we won't save China, but we can save Zimbabwe. We can do one small act that will make the world a better place. And now we kindly beg you to allow us to make that small change. We kindly beg, us, beg you to allow us to save Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank the gentleman for his remarks, and now I call upon Philip Dobranich to address the House on behalf of the opposition. Small army. 
in to the country he wants to take it in. Secondly, they talk about this extradition and taking him to the ICC when we have no accusation from the ICC until now. We don't have any grounds, any internationally recognized grounds on which we could capture Robert Mugabe and take him to the International Criminal Court. No such thing has been issued by the ICC. So again, apparently they fail to recognize the problem of today's situation and we're not willing to follow such a government team. But no, thank you. You have your chance. Secondly, let's talk about the message. Now, we've talked about this. And here, the second government team brings about this idea of the symbol, that if we remove a symbol, everything suddenly changes. Yes? We might be able to agree to that at a certain point. But there's a difference between removing a symbol and actively, openly killing and destroying a symbol for a nation from an outside source. As soon as a symbol of power is destroyed by an enemy that is easily identifiable, we see that we don't solve the problem. We only instigate more and more violence. Now let's talk about this message a bit further. Now they have a couple of issues. Firstly, they want Africa to do everything by itself. Now that, at least for us as team opposition, sends a message that Africa should solve its problem itself. We as the Western world and the international community cost them, we don't care. I mean, those guys should go take care and handle it. Now, if they don't want Africa to solve the problems on themselves, by themselves, they keep on feeding the rhetoric which got us the president of Zimbabwe, which we have right now, and they have shown us no reason that something like this will repeat again. Because as soon as we have an outside support, as soon as the Western world prosecutes Robert Mugabe through the International Criminal Court, we're facing a too great risk to get another dictator on the same grounds that we got this one. And this is the risk we on the opposition know are not willing to accept. Now, Let's get to the things we've heard from the second government team so far. Now, when they talk about the symbol removal, I think we've already dealt with that point. But then they get to this point that we've got other problems here. We've got the problems of agriculture and that we've put some sanctions on. We don't recognize diplomats of Zimbabwe. Well, let's ask ourselves, what does this argument show us? It shows us we've tried doing some nasty stuff. We've tried destroying their agricultural system. We've tried destroying their currency. We've been putting sanctions, diplomatic sanctions on them, and they haven't worked. This argument doesn't prove us, doesn't give us any justification whatsoever to go in. Because the only thing this argument proves is that we've been trying, and we've been doing harm to that country, therefore we should go in and do even more harm. Yes, I would like you here to make a clear distinction that those sanctions were imposed by the EU and the United States of America while the plan here talks about the African Union. Okay, thank you. Now America. let's get to the African Union. We have another problem with this. Either the United Nations as a whole are going to allow this action, this military action of African Union going in, into Zimbabwe, or it's not going to be legal under the international law. So basically, we're facing another problem right here. How, no, thank you, Sergei. How are we willing to allow a uniform force if from the African Union go into another country, invade a country's sovereignty without the blessing of an international body? No, thank you. Now let's get to the extension that we're about to propose. Since we've dealt with the effectiveness and we've dealt with the, the message that has been brought up so far, we have to deal with another point that is crucial for today's debate. It is the fact of how we perceive international relations to be, which then later shapes the way we act in international relations. Now, if we allow, no thank you, if we allow at any point, which we do sometimes, an action to destroy the sovereignty of a country, to kill the country's leader, to do anything with any military force in that country, we have to have a clear set of measures, to a clear set of criteria when we allow that. Yes. If Zimbabwe belongs to Zimbabweans, then why is the government elected by Zimbabweans being suppressed right now? We've seen a signed power sharing deal. We've seen a step towards a brighter future. Now, just because the government team is like the French and tries to find a revolution to haste things up and do things as fast as they can, we're not willing to support them so far. Now, let's get finally to the extension. Because we need a clear measure of criteria, which we don't have right now. Because to quote the Guardian and to take a look at the Equatorial Guinea, in comparison to Equatorial Guinea, Zimbabwe is stable and benign. 
We're facing basically a war if we send someone into Zimbabwe. What we're saying is that we have to stop covering up our intentions. Because the fact is that we're not going into Equatorial Guinea simply because of their own production, which helps us as the Western world. And when we face such different standards into doing something in one country and not doing it in another country, we're facing a deterioration of the international community, of the structure of the international community, which we're not willing to accept. And this is what brings us to people like Mugabe, who are able to justify their acts upon the Western imperialism. It is time to stop them. Thank you. <clears throat> I thank the gentleman for his remarks. I call upon Ali Ash to deliver the closing speech for the government. And then when he moved against our interests, suddenly he becomes this enemy, this beast. How can you claim more high ground in, in life than this? Well, last year there were elections and he lost. <laughs> <laughs> He's still the head of his country. So, okay, uh, maybe in the past uh, we didn't, but now is the time we should remove Robert Mugabe. And uh, what was I saying? Um, by removing Mugabe and implementing some kind of third force to prop up Tangerai, you're taking away his legitimacy too. How is that going to help uh, Zimbabwe? Why? Well, this uh, Tangerai, he, uh, he stepped aside because he didn't want people to be killed, because he didn't have enough, probably not enough resources, enough army to actually um, to actually become the, the chief of the state and that's why we need some others to help him and that does not mean that we would destroy his legitimacy or something. Uh, we would just help him actually uh, become what he deserves to be. And, uh, well, maybe we will, if we take these actions, maybe we will not succeed. Maybe we, uh, maybe we will not uh, do what we, we wanted to, but we must try, we must at least try to do something, because it's the, uh, no thank you, it's the uh, innate sense of humanity, mine, and I hope yours, that is screaming for the replacement of, of Robert Mugabe, because... Uh, uh, because this is not right what's happening, yes. But you're willing to start a bloodthirsty civil war just to have a go? Uh, why civil war? Well, we don't see why this would uh, bring a civil war, because uh, there 
have been elections, there were no such incidents, at least after when, when uh, the leader lost. Well, uh, maybe if we just uh, <coughs> send in a lot of amount of troops, um, they, what, what, what can they do? What can Lugalistan actually do if we send in thousands of troops? Nothing. We can just, uh, I don't know, not really kill them, but try to solve this in a peaceful way somehow, if that's possible. Now, uh, uh, now, is, if we put uh, uh, these things on the scale what's been said uh, from the side of the government and the opposition, we can clearly see that the opposition is still going on with this, uh, with this uh, ideology of the West that we will only intervene where there's oil and not when there isn't Shame, any. Sir. Shame on you here. <laughs> now, well, I think that uh, this uh, has somehow proved that the situation in Zimbabwe is really uh, really, really bad. Uh, we have c certain diseases coming up and stuff, and we must stop this somehow, and the arguments of the government has proved how the removal of Robert Mugabe would somehow uh, put things, uh, uh, would somehow solve things that it could be uh, better, because um, because it can't really get any worse, can it? And, uh, I thank the gentleman for his remarks, and now I call upon Maya Zimmerman to conclude the debate. Yeah. 
African uni unity. Because there are two possibilities. If, if they're sending a mass message and if they're wanting African Union as an actor, well, we say, oh, if they want the international community as an actor, we say they lack the political will that was already pr uh, presented by the lack of even applying sanctions. Why would we spare our soldiers, spare and drive it? Now, secondly, if they're talking about African Union, uh, we say, firstly, the message is bad because we as and African Union has dictators in its own forces. We as African Union dictators will overthrow this dictator because of no political freedom. Well, that's just hypocrisy. And secondly, we say if South African president is leading this, it's the same president that uh, the opposition leader did not want to cooperate with because he was too loose on the, uh, on the Mugabe. So basically, it's not going to work. We're just going to send a wrong message. The reality is that we, as the international community, are, cannot do, cannot deal with Mugabe right now, and that's why we're out outsourcing this problem to African Union. Well, that has never solved the problem. That will not solve the problem. The message, the true message we're uh, sending, is that we don't like you, and we will uh, basically invade your country because you don't have oil. It's the equatorial Africa that we basically uh, have good relationship with their uh, dictator, and, ha and he even creates even greater, uh, worse situations because they have oil, because they let our corporations into their country. And Mugabe does not have this political card. Yes, we're good. Mugabe has said that he will never, never surrender power. Are you willing to wait for never? And that's exactly what uh, leads me to my third point. What will this result in? Because we have never, what we are saying is, yes, we as an international community need to help build democracy there. We need to assure free elections and help free elections. However, if we uh, come in by force, this will result into, uh, in a civil war, and this means it will make the situation only worse. Why will it result in a civil war? Because they oversimplify international relations. Yes, I imagine Mugabe, after he hears African Union is coming for him, just think, oh, okay, fine, when at 5 p.m. we'll be fine with you. Of course he will uh, mobilize army. Of course he will call in troops. Of course the violence will increase. Of course the region itself will become unstable, exactly because Mugabe has supporters in the region itself. Which this means is that we will not endanger only Zimbabwe, but the whole region. First, further on, we will just make Mugabe's rhetoric reality. We, he, as uh, he that always talks about uh, Western imperialism, will just be proven right because we will be imperialistic, because we will choose him over the oil uh, rich dictator. Further on, we will make him an idol of the country. Right now, uh, they oversimplify and say, well, we will remove the idol and that will make everything right. We say the idol is in the country. Mugabe in the country is so important that you cannot just remove his picture and everyone will forget about him. People will go against the Western imperialism. People will go against an army intruding into their own sovereignty. And further on, we already talked. We already talked about how basically we need to give the legitimacy to the opposition leader by not simply uh, uh, giving him the power. So basically, because they have not proven you effectiveness, but they have not even given you the moral high ground, we beg you to oppose the motion. Permission granted across the house. I didn't see on my hand. Cool. <laughs> Achoo. What, what an insult to the other team. Have you ever seen those things? Have you ever seen those things?